Today's meeting is about the portable poultry bedding processor. It's finished. I picked it up. It's parked here in the barn at Wab Wallopin. And uh, we're going to run it this week, make some tweaks on it. I'm going to discuss those tweaks when we show pictures and video of the unit today. And um, we'll go from there. To begin with, we have a, a budget that Wes Ramsey has been working for us. Um, and it is, well, let me, let me bring it up and I will show you what's, well, Wes can discuss it, go on with what's, uh, what's happening with it. I have no idea what this is. Okay, Wes, you're on. Okay, thank you, Will. Um, just to, so everybody knows uh, what we're looking at here, um, the Association for Warm Season Grass Producers had applied for a, a SARE grant, which is uh, Sustainable Agriculture and Research and Education. Um, we received a grant for $29,993. Um, and I work with Penn Soil RC&D Council, which is acting as the fiscal agent for the project. Um, the project actually is a two-year project that was, um, you know, uh, figured out here by the Association for Warm Season Grass Producers. And uh, the first year basically was um, build the unit and um, as Will said, test and evaluate it, um, possibly make some refinements in it. and. Um, and then start to demonstrate it, uh, you know, on farms around the area to uh, to uh, demonstrate the concept and uh, hopefully uh, prove out a uh, sellable commodity here um, for packaged poultry bedding and uh, small uh, markets, uh, backyard producers, and so forth. So, just to to give you a little bit of insight in what you're looking at there. This is an Excel form that was the approved budget for the project. And as we go down through this form, you'll see where we've identified um, either people or purchases, um, you know, people that would do certain parts of the project and other parts would be uh, purchase of equipment, uh, supplies that we need to carry out the project. So, um, Starting uh, at the top of the thing, you'll see year one and year two. There's columns for each year. Um, the first item there was uh, my name. Um, and I was, uh, I guess, uh, rail railroaded or elected to be the leader of the project. But um, my responsibility would be file the SARE reports, uh, supervise the project, collect data, and um, report the results back to SARE, you know, and then um, actually get the money from SARE and uh, pay all the bills. So um, the first year we all allocated $500 for that, the second year $700 uh, because that's when we would actually compile all the data and write the reports back to the SARE organization. So, um, in the purple shaded area there, this is the actual budget that we've given SARE. And if you notice at the far right hand edge of that, I've added a column uh, in J for actual expenses to date. And this would be expenses that we've actually um, turned into SARE and um, are in the process of receiving reimbursement for that. Um, we allocated $500 to, uh, to cover my time working for Penn Soil in doing that. Um, I also, at the same time, sent Will um, a spreadsheet of our actual QuickBooks recount, accounting report. Uh, and we don't need to really look at that, but if you looked at that, um, you would see that, that we've spent about $800 so far, but we agreed to cap our expense at $500 for the for the first year because uh, we want your budget to stay on track and uh, we did not want to be part of the cause of going over budget. So um, 
we're already at $800, but we've only uh, invoiced SARE for 500, and that's all we're going to take for the first year um, from the direct project expense. Um, next item, as we go down the page there, um, you'll see under non personnel materials and supplies, um, we budgeted for um, heavy duty two ply craft paper, biodegradable, compostable, moisture resistant bags um, for distribution of the product once it's complete. Um, I guess we haven't actually uh, received any invoices for that yet. And um, you guys can figure out, I guess, when you're ready to do that. And the money is still in the grant for that. Um, next item down the page is uh, materials and supplies. Um, we had a travel component in this grant. Um, since I'm the project leader in collecting the data, we had budgeted uh, mileage uh, for me to come down to the project site and um, be part of the demonstrations and so forth. Um, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we obviously haven't done that, um, at least not yet to this point. So that money is unspent in the grant as well at this point. And um, next item would be brochures and handouts that would we would use to uh, sort of promote the product, uh, the, the project as we go along. And that was an item that we put in the second year uh, for $320 to purchase those brochures or handouts uh, or produce them. And obviously we haven't done that as well. Uh, so then we would go down, uh, couple columns there till we get to the consultants. Um, there's a list of people that we figured were gonna have a part in this project. And um, we tried to come up with an estimate of um, how much work um, it would involve. And um, we're paying $20 an hour for that work. Um, you'll see uh, we've only really had one entry there so far to date. Um, and that's for Len Reggie, who has done uh, the bulk of the fabrication and uh, assembly of the machinery. Um, we had estimated 105 hours um, for a total of $2,100. And uh, typically, like most grant uh, projects, uh, we have a tendency to underestimate uh, how long it will actually take to do this work. Um, we're always pretty optimistic. and. Uh, I guess after years of experience, my, my kind of rule of thumb here, is what do you think it's gonna take? Uh, and then multiply it by three and you're probably pretty close. So you'll see there that um, we've been invoiced uh, $4,570 for labor to date. Um, but this really isn't um, necessarily a bad thing um, because um, as we go down a little further on the page, um, we can talk about some of this was, you know, buying equipment and um, just basically installing it on the trailer uh, that we purchased. Uh, another aspect of it was we might fabricate uh, some of the machinery um, pretty much from scratch uh, using, using materials that um, Len had available. Um, and so uh, we also put a separate section in the grant that kind of identified all the pieces of machinery and we said we would either purchase them or fabricate them. And as it turns out, um, you know, a lot of that was actually fabricated. So, um, so those costs, um, you know, um, kind of offset some of this uh, increased labor cost here uh, right off the bat in year one. Security message. Your computer has been locked up. Wes, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm not sure who or what that was, but. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Um, let's see, are, are you able to scroll the document a little bit more, Will? Yep. Okay. Uh, well, just before we leave that, you know, there's in that section, um, it, like I said, identified the, the cooperators who would do certain things. And, um, you know, whether it was um, travel involved to, to the 
farms that we were going to demonstrate on or or uh, labor for their participation. Um, we do have some funds in the grant for that, which have we have not used yet. Um, um, under the item there, conference meeting and workshop, we did have Ag Progress Day's exhibitor fee to demonstrate the unit on one time at $350. And uh, that's listed for a second year uh, because that would be near the end of the project uh, to actually demonstrate it uh, to a larger group. So going on down the page a little further, you'll see purchase of equipment or the cost of fabrication of the equipment. Um, and you'll see uh, the different items there that we knew we would either have to purchase or build. And uh, they're listed there at what our estimated cost was for each. If you um, add up all those components that we listed there, I, I put a little note in there that says budget estimate $15,008. Um, and then if you look over at the right hand column, actual expenses to date, you'll see that we're Eleven thousand eight hundred dollars and sixty-one cents budget. Um, so under that, um, you know, if you kind of go back to what I said about the labor for Len doing a lot of this work, um, you know, we're our estimate for the labor was a couple thousand dollars light, but uh, on the fabrication end of this thing, uh, we budgeted fifteen thousand, and we're only at 11.8. So, um, you know, we've still got a little bit of room under the equipment budget to um, make any maybe last minute adjustments that we need on the machinery. Uh, to And we'll still be on budget, I think, um, as far as the whole grant goes. Um, um, so then if you go down to the bottom of the page, uh, there you'll see uh, a little cost summary. Um, the the um, the total direct cost for the first year uh, were to be twenty one thousand five hundred twenty two dollars, and the way this grant uh, and most federal grants operate is that the organization that that does all the legwork on managing the grant. Um, has a billable item in there that's 10% of the direct project cost. Um, and so if the direct cost is $21,522, then 10% of that would be $2,152.20. Um, that's um, basically to pay Penn Soils overhead, uh, to pay our accountant um, for managing all the uh, expenses and tracking all the finances and for us. Um, and so out of our, um, our budgeted $21,522 in direct project costs, these would be the costs that are directly needed to, to make the project happen. Uh, we've only spent $16,875 and 61 cents. And, um, for the 10% admin money for Penn Soil, we've allocated 2152.20 and we've only spent $1,687.56 to date. So uh, budget wise, uh, you know, I think we're on track with everything, Will and uh, members of the group. Um, if anybody has any questions about that, I would try to answer them for you. Any questions? Okay, Look, Wes, nice job. How's, how is it working out for, for Penn Soil? What are you doing? Well, it, it's working, you know, the way it should be at this point. Um, you know, basically what our function is, is to, uh, to administer the grant. Um, the way the grant works, uh, they don't give us the money up ahead ahead of time. So we basically have to spend the money and then turn around um, and wait for Sarah to reimburse us. Um, so for instance, when we issue the, the last check um, to uh, Len for the labor and equipment, um, 
then we have to wait till he cashes the check. And then um, whenever we get the canceled check back, then we're allowed to submit that um, to SARE to get reimbursed for it. So, so right now, um, the bottom line is we're, as an organization, we're probably um, close to $5,300 in the red, but when they uh, process our uh, next reimbursement uh, form, that will complete uh, repaying us for everything we put out and cover all our costs. So okay. uh, we're satisfied with the way things are working. We, we very much appreciate you functioning in that capacity. Um, it, uh, having done other grants with, with STAR, I'm very much aware of the fact that you have to pay out before you get anything back from them. Uh, at, at one point in time, I was $17,000 in debt <laughs> over, <laughs> And we had to do some finagling to make that. So to have an organization like Penn Soil uh, leading the charge on this, uh, greatly appreciated. I have a question, Will. Yes, Lane. Yeah, on, uh, it's, it's probably just a technical issue, but on the bail on WAPA, the estimate was $3,500. Yes. The, in column G, the actual cost was 700. So I added that up. The, the, the sum total is correct, but the, the actual cost was 700. That's the unit I built to unroll the bales? Yes, yes. The round bale unloader. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, Len, what you're looking at there, this is the this is the budget that was developed before the grant was awarded. Oh, okay, okay. So, so that's an estimated cost. That's not an actual cost. Okay. The, the you know, the numbers there, I, um, in your last invoice, I guess you had specified numbers for each of those items. Uh, yeah. But those, but those actual numbers are not reflected here. The only thing that's really reflected is, um, the actual expense to date summary or total figure. Okay, I got it. Thanks. Any other comments, questions? Uh, yeah. Who's speaking? All right, let's, uh, let's go on to uh, another slide. Um, are you still seeing the screen? Yep. Okay. This is a, a, a slide presentation I put together to demonstrate the, the component parts of what we assembled. Len, feel free to jump in at any point in time. This is the, the trailer that we purchased from Tractor Supply. Uh, it's 12 foot long, and uh, my wife and I went and, and picked it up in the middle of a snowstorm and, and took it over to Len's place, and uh, it, it, it was the component that, that started the whole process. This is the company that manufactures the hammer mill that Len chose uh, and has worked with in the past. Uh, well, yes. Uh, we're not actually seeing any pictures except for you. Oh, really? Okay. Let me go back. At least, at least I'm not. <laughs> I'm not either. So, I, I, nice shot of all 10 of us, but. All right. Are we to, we're back together again. Let me go to um, share screen and jump over to, where is it? Well, it's not there. Well, there it is. How's that? Okay. All right. Here's the trailer. 12 foot long trailer. Picked it up in a snowstorm. Blah, blah, blah. This is the company that makes the hammer mill that we used. This is what it looked like when we when it arrived. Um, it, oops, it was trailer mounted, uh, all hooked up, ready to roll.
tongue off the front to hook on your quad to move it around your property. Uh, it had to totally be disassembled. Um, that's the back end of it, showing the top chute and the side chute um, and, and the trailer that it was mounted on. He pulled the, the motor off the unit um, and that's sitting uh, aside. This is the Trummel Mill that we built as last year's SARE project uh, and Len was able to re redesign it and incorporate it into the trailer unit so that it uh, it's being utilized. There it is mounted on the trailer in the early days of the, the assembly process. Len, any comments? I had to modify that uh, quite a bit to get it to work for us. Uh, that took up more time than I, I, I actually didn't anticipate number of hours required to do that. So that's one of the reasons the labor was a little higher than expected. But otherwise it worked out good. Don't don't worry about numbers, Glenn. You did a phenomenal job. <laughs> and there's the uh, a side view of it with the, the ramp coming up and into, oh. into the trouble mill. That's showing that the area right here on top where the barrel is going to go. There's the electrical panel. The inside, I, I couldn't, I didn't get it open um, to take a shot on the inside, but it was, uh, it was quite an undertaking to wire that thing. Um, there's the inside of it with all the component parts and the stuff over here on the right um, that he, he added to it so that we have a central control unit. Everything is worked from the back end of the trailer. Uh, the bales go in the back and the, and the material comes out the back. Uh, I think there are four motors on the unit, Len, is that correct? Yeah, four, four motors. And they're all controlled from that electrical unit so you can shut anything down uh, from from that single location at any point in time. You can see the conduit there. The whole thing is all the wiring runs through conduit to all of the motors uh, for protection. This is the, the barrel that the material goes up a ramp and drops into. Uh, on the top of that barrel is a black, there you can see it a little bit better, uh, a black retainer to keep the material from falling out of the the barrel and that barrel rotates and as it rotates the material drops down to the bottom and hits the knives that, that shear the, the material. Um, there's a good shot of the of the top piece. This is sitting in the garage down at the at the farm. Um, that's why you see the tarp there. At the bottom of that barrel are the knives and, and those knives rotate from the from the gas motor that's attached and depending upon where the barrel sits in relationship to those knives determines how slow or how fast the material is ground. Uh, one of the adjustments that we have to make is to lower the barrel about half an inch at, at the first attempt to, to see whether we can't get those knives to, to feed the material a bit faster. When you see the video of the machine running you'll see it it's not uh, it's not feeding as fast as it could. That's the drive unit that makes the barrel rotate. There's the electric motor and the, uh, the belt that goes around the, the bottom frame. That's how the, that's how the bags look that, that Len has been filling at his place. They're, they're squared off, they're very symmetrical. Um, the barrels, uh, the bags that, that Bruce Trumbauer was, was bagging that we took down to the Harrisburg Farm Show last year were, were almost round. And, and the reason lens bags come out so perfectly is he uses a frame. This is the dual, dual bag processing frame that he designed. Um, and he discovered that if we put a barrel, a drum switch on the motor that controls the trommel mill, if it's set to turn clockwise, 
the material comes out one side. If it's set to turn counterclockwise, the material will come out the other side. So you can fill bags on both sides depending upon how the drum switch is set. Um, he says it's an easy, easy uh, assembly. So uh, I'm, I'm gonna try and do it. Um, I've got the drum switch ordered and, and we'll make that adaption. Here's the, uh, another picture of that, of that unit um, with the bag inserted into the, the right hand side. Any questions or comments about the pictures? Okay, uh, let's go on to another a video. Hey, and Will, Will, Will yeah. this, is, this is Matt. I just had a quick question. Those are 30 pound bags when they're filled? Well, we don't go by weight because the moisture content of the material will change the weight drastically. If you're running at an 8% moisture content compared to a 10% or 20% moisture content, you're gonna have a drastic difference because of that added moisture that's in it. So we're going on the basis of volume. And what's your volume, Len? Three cubic feet, 3.25 cubic feet technically, but we could sell them at three cubic feet. Um, I might add, bedding is always sold by the cubic foot, just like peat moss or most other things that are bagged because of the moisture content variation. Hey, Will. Yes. Um, just one last comment. I think, uh, you know, I'm pretty impressed with the, the photos and uh, just wonder if you wouldn't mind sharing a copy with me that I could uh, share with our board of directors just to show them the progress. Okay, we'll do it. I, I can send you the, well, the whole presentation, our whole meeting is being recorded um, and, uh, I will send I will send this this slide set along with both videos to you. That'd be great. Okay. All right. Let me close this and go to the first.